Fort Carroll there. And right over there on the other side of the Key Bridge is where the Star Spangled Banner was written. Sorry. <laughs> oh, just need a minute. Just need a second here. Fox News alert recovery efforts back underway right now for the six people presumed dead after the Francis Scott Key bridge collapse. This as we learned that the cargo ship involved had a complete power blackout before the crash. Let's talk to one guy that is going to be impacted by this. That's bringing Luke McFadden at Chesapeake Bay, a waterman and YouTuber. He also is a fisherman as well. Sir, thanks so much for your, uh, joining the program. You're actually on your boat. Tell me how this is going to impact you being a commercial crab fisherman so not exactly my average video today i mean i, I really can't uh, even really wrap my head around it yet i mean i still have a job to do some of you've been watching me for a while some of you guys are new but the content i make is not for content's sake the content i make is things that i would be doing whether i was shooting a video or not you know i'm a commercial fisherman here in the chesapeake bay of maryland on the upper bay just south of Baltimore City. You know, I live and die by the water. You know, the Chesapeake is my lifeline and the same for a lot of people around here. So I still have a job to do. I'm on my boat, the Weibo. I have to take it over and swap it and get hauled. There's something on the propeller. It's not allowing it to reach its full speed and I'm really hoping I can make it to the marina where I'm gonna get this boat lifted out. Uh, my other boat, the Southern Girl, is over there. Yeah, I hauled it out, painted it, fixed it. The plan is when I get this boat there, I'm gonna leave this boat and I'm gonna get in the Southern Girl and go home. It was gonna be next week's video, but because of this tragic thing that happened, I'm moving it up to this week just because it needs to be addressed. At 1.30 a.m. today, the Key Bridge collapsed and the Key Bridge connects Anne Arundel County and Baltimore County here in the Upper Chesapeake. It's just south of Baltimore City. It was built in the 70s, and I mean, it's been there my whole life. <laughs> I've never been out in the bay and not seen it. And I've worked here on the water for the past decade. And I've been on the water for longer than that my whole life, and it's just been a constant. To see it not there is humbling, sobering. There was people on the bridge when it happened. Basically what happened is there is a 950 foot sea container ship leaving the port of Baltimore, headed south. They had some sort of mechanical failure where they lost all power. You can see in the surveillance video, the ship went dark, meaning they lost all power twice. Then they tried to recover. I can see where they put the boat in the full reverse and gave it all the throttle it had. You can see the smoke rolling out of the smokestack and you can see the stern, which is the back of the ship, walk. And so in these really, really, really big container ships that have single screw, meaning one propeller, the, the propeller is so big, like 20 feet or more wide, that when you give that prop full throttle, especially at a low speed like that, you give it all the power it's got, that prop rotating acts like a wheel on the water and it walks the stern, whatever way the propeller is turning. I could see in the video that they were about to hit it, bay pilot, put it full reverse and it walked the stern over and it aligned the pal perfectly wrong to hit one of the main spans and watching that bridge collapse was like just crazy and uh, just not a lot of words to describe it um, tragic obviously I was on that bridge last night at 7 30 p.m. driving home from where I'm taking this boat now and my plan this morning was to drive my truck over that bridge to the marina to get my boat home. And uh, it's just not there anymore. This is different for me 
than it's going to be to a lot of you guys watching. Obviously, it's a nationwide tragedy. It's going to affect everybody globally, really, because of the port, but locally especially, and for a long time. But the reason it affects me, I think a little more maybe than you know some of you guys watching, is because it's so close to home. It's literally 15 minutes from my house. I drive over that bridge daily. Like I said, I was on that bridge hours before it collapsed. And the fact that I was supposed to drive over that bridge this morning is just unquantifiable to me right now. It's just very personal. Um, you know, that bridge is a huge part of the heartbeat of Baltimore in this area. People use it to get to work. Huge part of I-695. And here in Maryland, we only have two big bridges. And it's the Chesapeake Bay Bridge and the Key Bridge. It connects so many people and families and get people work, just going over it to get to work and people going to see their families and everything like that. And it's just gone and people lost their lives. Um, the construction workers that were on it, yeah, just, it's hard to even describe really what I'm feeling. I, I can't even begin to think about how this is going to affect everybody locally and globally. The most immediate thing is that it's a mile and a half long bridge that just fell into the water and it blocked the only entrance to the port of Baltimore, which is maybe the 13th most active port, I think in the US, whatever the numbers are, the port of Baltimore is the heartbeat of Baltimore. It brings industry and jobs. Since Bethlehem Steel's gone away and all these other things, the port is what the people have left here. What supports so many, uh, you know, uh, families, blue collar families in particular. Um, and it's really, <laughs> sorry, it's really, uh, it's going to have an effect on all these families that depend on the port for work because no ships can get in or out of the port of Baltimore until the bridge is cleaned up. However big, you know, mile and a half of bridge laying in the center of the channel, there is no way to get around that. <laughs> And I don't even know how they're going to begin to clean it up. You know, I went out this morning early when I saw that it happened in a boat, a little boat, uh, and got pretty close to it, uh, closer than I think anybody will be able to in a long time, just because we were just kind of the first ones there, because it's literally right there. I mean, I hopped in a boat and I was there in a 15 minute boat ride, just to kind of document and to see firsthand really what what, what it is and uh, I got a lot of footage and pictures and uh, you know after it got a little after the first half an hour or so you know more people started to show up and you know they backed everybody off so now they set up a perimeter where you can't get anywhere near it. You are currently 0.3 nautical miles away from the key bridge you need to back away from the bridge please. Alright, we're getting we're getting told to back away from the bridge. You know, I, I think that we were the closest you're gonna be able to ever get to that scenario. I don't know. I put up a video online, um, a short, and a lot of people have seen it, a lot of people have reached out, but uh, there's a lot of egregious things being said in the comment section, you know, accusing people of not doing the best they could in the scenario and being some sort of inside job or it being some sort of conspiracy and I'm telling you from from what I know and this being so integrated and not only the bridge itself but the people that are involved I mean the bay pilots that are in charge of piloting the ships into the harbor and out of the harbor this was not an inside job this is a tragedy and the captains did everything they could in their power to stop this, obviously. It makes me sad that I even have to clarify, but if you know boats, like I do, you know, or like some of you guys watching, you, you're gonna be able to watch this footage and tell that this was a freak accident. So I just wanted to say, from my perspective, from everything I can see, knowing these people and knowing the community, and seeing the video, the fact that people would say things like that is disgusting to me, honestly. We just rounded the corner 
or out of the creek to head across the bay and to look up and not see the bridge for the second time in my life. First time was this morning, second time is now. It's just crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's just, this is life changing for a lot of people. Being that this thing is so integrated into our lives and community, oh man, the whole landscape that I've looked at, loved and appreciated my entire life is just changed now. That is the ship with the pieces of the bridge on it. It's the left span. That's the right span. That's Baltimore County there. That's Anne Arundel County. And that's the city of Baltimore behind it. And right there is the ship with the pieces of the bridge still laying on top of it. Uh, all the DNR, Department of Natural Resource Police, police boats, all of the Coast Guard, all the divers, all the pilot boats are out there right now looking for survivors. The water is in the low 50s or high 40s. Anybody they find now will not be a survivor. That's the reality of the situation. That water is too cold. I believe they found two survivors so far and they were looking for more. A few years ago, we had the ship, the Everformer, get stuck. Same thing, leaving the Port of Baltimore south of the key bridge uh, a few miles and nobody was hurt fortunately a boat just ran aground just seeing and remembering the way that that affected the people around here and how that trickled down and affected world trade was mind-blowing when that happened boats could still pass and get into the harbor the port continued to function and people continued to have a place to go to work here but this is different. This is a problem that we now have to fix that's a lot bigger than any one person. In a time where the world is really <laughs> divided, and I think that this could be a great way for people to uh, put that aside and come together and solve this problem. This is really an opportunity to show the world that Baltimore and Maryland is strong and that we can handle this. We can support the people in our community when they need it. Nothing's gonna stop us. We're gonna come back even better and stronger. We're almost to the marina. Hopefully we can get this boat hauled up, get the other boat out, and maybe we'll try to take the Southern Girl over there, see what progress has been made, so. Look at that. There's the key bridge there. And that's the marina I was going to. And so to drive my truck, I just go up here and across the bridge and back to my house. I shouldn't have to say this, but I'm going to anyway. I'm not with any news source. I'm not with any third party. I'm a crab fisherman from Maryland. I am boots on the ground, and this just happened to be in my backyard. And I just felt it needed to be addressed by somebody that just doesn't have any agenda, nothing. All right, we made it. Boat's here. I'm on the Southern Girl, so we're swapping boats. We're headed back. Trading in the paddy wagon for the Southern Girl. She's pretty though. We're here. I mean, obviously they haven't done any visible progress, but I mean, how could you expect them to? It's just such a crazy thing to see that's real. It's real. This is in America, in our backyard. I, I would be willing to bet it'd be five years before we have another bridge going to take months to clean it up. It's sad. Especially blue collar America. They have not got enough credit lately. All the people that work at the port of Baltimore, thousands and thousands of jobs. And all the people that go over that bridge at five, six o'clock in the morning, a lot of those are blue collar guys. I was just at the marina and there's going to be people that aren't going to use that marina anymore because it used to be a 30 minute drive and now it's an hour and a half. It's going to affect a lot of businesses over that way. I'm seeing on the news, you know, people are saying, oh, they're just going to be out of work for a couple months, you know, for this and that, the people at the port. People cannot make it a couple months right now. It's so expensive to live. A couple months is not an option for most people. Going from hardworking Americans 
to hardworking Americans without jobs. That's where they got benefits. That's where they had their retirement. And it's now all up in the air. There's got to be a solution. There's got to be something that we can do. It's got to be something I can do to help these people. I mean, to do what we can to show our support for our city and our state. But I just don't know. If there's any comic relief, it's that uh, my controls ripped right out of my dash today. So I guess this is how fast we're going home. Thank you to all the service people, all of the paramedics, all of the Coast Guard, all of the divers, all of the police officers, the DNR, everybody out there who's putting their own lives on the line to try to help find these bodies and clean this mess up. Don't forget about those people.